In early September, the World Wildlife Fund released its Living Planet Report. Its headlines were that population sizes of mammals, birds, fish, amphibians and reptiles have seen an alarming average drop of 68% since 1970. In July this year, the first official red list for British mammals was published and highlighted that one quarter of British mammals are now at risk of extinction. Sadly, the iconic British hedgehog is amongst this list of mammals. In the 1950s, the population in the UK was estimated to be around 30 million. In the 1990s, this had dropped to 1.5 million, and surveys carried out by the British Trust for Ornithology have shown a 66% decline in the number of hedgehogs over the last 13 years. It is thought that, if something is not done, then hedgehogs may become extinct by 2025. Hedgehogs are found across the UK and can live in a variety of habitats including woodland, farmland, marshes and moorland. But they are not found in habitats above the tree line, probably because of a lack of suitable nesting sites and materials for the construction of winter nests. They use nests for a daytime rest, for breeding and for hibernation, and need deciduous leaves and some sort of supporting structure to build them. Areas of land that have this sort of vegetation are often lost to development or management. Although, luckily, studies have shown that when they build nests for hibernation, many hedgehogs can use a small area and will travel up to 500 metres to these areas. Surveys have shown that hedgehogs are most abundant within gardens, parks and amenity land close to or within human settlements. There are a few reasons for this, and one is that in urban and suburban areas, humans often feed hedgehogs pet food in their gardens, which nicely supplements the hedgehog's natural diet of small invertebrates, such as worms, beetles, slugs, caterpillars, earwigs and millipedes. This is of huge benefit to the hedgehogs and brings great delight to the humans doing it. My parents are such humans and they have some lovely video clips of the hedgehogs coming for their evening feed. Modern farming practices have caused a huge decline in invertebrate numbers and diversity across the UK landscape. This is either due to the use of chemicals for pest control, a reduction in plant diversity, or a loss of habitat due to land change. However, many farmers are now leaving grass field margins to encourage invertebrate populations, provide food for birds in the form of seeds and insects, and provide nesting sites for birds. Research shows that hedgehogs which live on farmland forage mainly within these field margins, so this will be of huge benefit to them. In the first few decades after World War II, there was a huge reduction in the number of hedgerows as farmers were encouraged to be more productive. This strategy has now changed, and farmers are encouraged to increase the density per hectare of hedges by increasing the width, height and length of hedgerows. Hedgehogs love hedgerows and find food in them as well as using them for shelter from predators and for nesting sites during hibernation. They also provide corridors for the hedgehogs to move. Hedgehogs need to roam widely for food and mates, but like to come home to a particular home range. Fragmentation because of rows and other features, such as land conversion, act as a physical or behavioural barrier to this foraging way of life. As well as making it difficult for the hedgehogs to access food resources and find suitable nesting sites, it also prevents gene flow between populations and increases the probability of populations becoming locally extinct. Hedgehogs are also frequently run over on roads, and it is believed to be an important factor in the decline of the number of hedgehogs. In Britain, traffic on major roads has increased by 9.5% since the year 2000, and is expected to grow an estimated 17 to 51% by 2050. It is estimated that between 167,000 and 335,000 hedgehogs are killed annually. There is a low probability of hedgehogs being killed during the winter as they hibernate October-November time to March-April time. They are most active between March and October and this is when they are more vulnerable to collisions with vehicles, particularly when juvenile hedgehogs move from the area they were born in. A study has shown that hedgehogs are most likely to be hit by vehicles in small villages and towns and the suburban areas of large cities. To help mitigate these deaths by collisions, a new road sign has been designed to warn drivers that they are in an area where hedgehogs and other small mammals could be crossing. Another strategy is to reduce the speed limit in these areas. 
The final reason for the decline of hedgehog numbers that I would like to discuss is that of predation by badgers. Badgers are another iconic British species and, despite the culling of them due to them allegedly transferring TB to cattle, their numbers have doubled over the past 25 years. A number of studies have shown that badgers negatively affect hedgehog numbers by direct predation on them and through competition for food resources. Hedgehogs tend to find places to live that are away from badger sets, but not always, and they do coexist in some areas and have done historically. It is obviously a complex relationship which needs more research. One thing that is certain is that hedgehogs prefer to live in areas that have some form of human habitation rather than the wider countryside. This could be due to more food being available for them from helpful humans or from the reduction in the number of badges. So what can be done to help save the British hedgehog? I have touched upon some of the things that farmers can do and the People's Trust for Endangered Species and the Hedgehog Preservation Society are funding research to enable them to give farmers and landowners advice about managing land sympathetically for hedgehogs. As individuals, there is a lot we can do to help hedgehogs thrive. Hedgehogs love gardens, so if we can make our gardens hedgehog friendly, that will go a long way to help them. It is simple things like putting a ramp in your pond so that they can climb out if they fall in, and placing a cover over drains so they can't fall into them checking an area before you've used a strimmer and before you light a bonfire, and stopping the use of chemicals in your garden. The hedgehogs will deal with the slugs for you. You can put food down for them, such as meat-based pet food and water, not milk, as like most mammals, they are lactose intolerant once weaned, and so it gives them diarrhea. And the most important thing you can do is connect up your garden with your neighbors. Hedgehogs travel around one mile every night to find enough food and a mate. The fences in our gardens and parks prevent the hedgehogs from being able to roam freely, reducing the amount of land and food available to them. Getting your neighbours together to make a hedgehog highway enables them to have the space they need. There is a really cool website called hedgehogstreet.co.uk which sets out how to do this and you can then add your details to a map. I have put the link at the very top of the sources. At this time of year, hedgehogs start to go into hibernation they need to be about 600 grams in weight to safely do this. During hibernation, hedgehogs lower their body temperature to their surroundings and enter a state of torpor. Their normal body functions become very slow. For example, their heart rate drops from around 190 to 20 beats per minute. This enables them to save lots of energy. But they do not sleep through the whole of the winter. On mild days, they can wake up and forage for some food. They will even move between nests every few weeks sometimes camping out in other hedgehogs' empty nests, a bit like Airbnb. So don't worry if you see a hedgehog out and about in the winter, but do provide food and water for it and keep an eye on it, as it takes up a lot of energy to get their heart rate and body temperature back to normal. This is also why you should not disturb hedgehogs when they are hibernating, so be vigilant when you are tidying up your garden over the winter months. Something that looks like a mess to you could be the perfect spot for a hibernating hedgehog. In the last decade, it has been observed that some hedgehogs have not been hibernating and there have also been some hoglets born over the winter. No one really knows why, but it could be linked to global warming. During the winter, their natural food is no longer in abundance, so it is important that if you've been feeding them over the summer, that you continue to do so over the winter. I have put a link at the top of the sources, it is the second one down which takes you to an exciting project that is mapping where winter feeding hedgehogs are found and when they are awake to monitor this trend. This is part of the Hedgehog 365 campaign run by the Project Amazing Grace. Grace is a rescued baby hedgehog which inspired the lead guitarist from the band Queen, Brian May, to set up a rescue centre called Amazing Grace on his estate in Surrey. So there are many people who are trying to save the hedgehog and it is really great to know that this is something that the general public can also get involved in. If you live in the UK and have the right kind of garden, think about how to make it hedgehog friendly, connect it to your neighbours and get feeding those hedgehogs.